if we're if we're just gonna exclude raids and dungeons, what do you guys feel was the most successful feature or system or gameplay element in World of Warcraft currently? Doesn't matter which expansion, whatever. I have a couple on my mind, but I'm curious what you what you guys and gals think. Like, what was the best thing? In well, apart from raids and dungeons, again, there has to be something that yeah. was was outside. Like think 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 about stuff like Orgast, you know, Mage Tower, you know, external yeah, well, ex external gameplay loops that really were fun for you. I'm I'm really curious that you that you enjoyed doing when you didn't want to raid because we de we definitely got a lot of comments uh, on the uh, casual versus the one percent when people just wanted stuff to do that wasn't just like high end PvP or high end PV PV freedom. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, okay, I mean, that's so something have, that you do. You do freedom. I don't yeah. know. Mage Tower, they, when they introduced Transmog solo challenges like Mage Tower, World like Green Fire, Solo Vision. Solo Vision? Wasn't that uh, like uh, Horrific okay. Visions from... Uh, uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, yeah, the Vision is Challenge Mode Dungeons for Weapons and Gear Transmog. Yes. World PvP. We'd love to see more class quests given Mage's Prospire spell effects would be amazing. Class Hall stuff was fun. Pet Battles. Suramar was quite cool. Suramar, yes, yes, yep. yes. Oh, it's pretty cool. Transmog artifact weapons get unlocking. I can definitely see a vibe where we're going to clearly some some solo challenges here and uh, transmog. So cosmetics, because uh, I'm still gonna read it through, but I think at some point the devs need to realize that getting a uh, super legendary weapon is very cool an epic weapon is cool or whatever it will bump up your numbers you're gonna be the, the beast on details Beasties. but i think what they have forgotten is the fact that most of us are like super personal and intimate with our characters in this game and one of the things that grinds our gears is how we look if they're gonna capitalize on that, because look, this just reading effort, I can see a million transmogs. Mage Tower gave you transmogs. Uh, Challenge, Challenge mode modes, gives yeah. you transmogs. Um, realistic alt progression, sure, that, that's also. But I think everybody can agree that in some way or capacity, having a, a nice gameplay loop that would just reward you with a ton of variation on cosmetics. With Relevance such, to the content that and, you do. And, and listen, this would also address the last week's subject on casual versus hardcore that is casual content you can do a million different things and just be rewarded mm. with cosmetic stuff and have that variety of there uh but more let's see more so transform more complicated bgs like winter grass yes i agree B, they have Ooh. totally neglected battlegrounds man totally neglected. secrets to get mounts and cosmetics again resistance gear <laughs> uh doing old old world uh rep farms I love spell skins. Again, cosmetics. Um, it, it, it involves a lot on how you can customize and personalize your character. And they Notice really have that to nail the ground. Pretty yeah. much nobody said anything about any anything involving player power. Oh, yeah, of course. So, yeah, yeah. surprise, surprise, Blizzard. Player power is not everything that we want. But player power is the only thing that seems to have been rewarded to us lately. There was also, I can I can add in a couple of things. Maybe not everybody um, was playing during those times. Brawlers, Brawler's Guild was very nice and very cool. And I kind of loved that. It was I, I was mainly a PvPer, but that was something I really enjoyed doing. It was it was cool because it was like sort of like a fight club vibe. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you ever do it? <laughs> Uh, I never caught it. Whenever it's still, it's still up. It's, it comes as a cycle, cycled event. But uh, I, for some reason, I, whenever it came well, up, I never when had they, a, When they introduced it, it was for me. It was one of the most amazing things. And I tell man, how oh yeah, they the do concept this as a is PvP? nice. But yeah, well, you had people on the top seeing you perform. You know, on the, on your shit. It was, yeah, and it was even at some point it got instance and it wasn't that much. But the feeling that you have, it's like sort of like when you're streaming and you're doing something and everybody's watching and everything. It's sort of like that, but within the game, because there's people yeah. over there just looking at you, finding the boss, maybe getting killed or whatever. It was pretty cool. That, 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 that was that was an interesting, interesting, definitely event that kind of added a dynamic to the social aspect and actually how you interacted with the world. I do want to point out something that uh, the chat kind of nailed, but I don't, I haven't seen anybody s uh, say it yet. Um, I actually enjoyed uh, class campaigns in Legion. Yep. Because I feel, obviously, uh, we're not going to trash the Shadowlands lore and story one more time, but Suramar was a, was, a, was a good experience because with Suramar, 
what they did occasionally you had like you know those little solo scenarios and missions you obviously engaged in a story that developed and uh, created a world around you it developed the, the the state of the city developed the state of the resistance until you actually assaulted nighthold that was amazing and again the class campaigns started with a story for each class and how that uh, that specific class got together in their own little order hall to like tackle the the big threat which was the legion and i think stories that have developed like that uh, are missing from from wow you can say that they're doing that with covenant campaigns but i mean come on man um it's one thing to put covenant campaigns in for covenants that nobody cares about it's another to bring class campaigns for your druid that you've been playing for 15 years oh yeah it's like i'm finally seeing all of the torrent night elves trolls druids scenarios and all those things that was that was like such a smart idea whoever thought about that was was a genius because you brought not only did you make everybody playing that class feel Steve so the loser awesome was involved in that, yeah me. well so he can do good shit. <laughs> um and basically like not only did you feel amazing as whatever you were playing right seeing everybody oh oh these are all the druids these are this is my people man this, this is all the bears and the trees and they're all here oh, yeah. and then you have the if you're like a lore buff you're like oh scenarios and fucking uh, High Lord, whatever rune totem, the the torrent dude and stuff like that. It's like that was that was really cool. That uh, that made WoW feel Warcrafty, right? Yeah. So uh, um, I think it was it, it was a a very good match with also the the theme of the expansion and how it all played out with the story and, and all of that. I mean, I can surely see something class specific being made into Dragonflight. However, I do feel that Dragonflight seems to be more themey. Oh more. yeah, no, I, I'm not. Mean, I'm, I don't mean to bring back class order halls. I mean to bring no, back no, but uh, class, story class specific content. Yeah, That's like like <coughs> quests, like actual actual but RPG quests, quests that can actually mean something at the end. Because sure, it's it's cool to see you know the the story, the elements of your class. Like you you mentioned the druid and seeing like big totems and seeing bears and all of that. But uh, like like how the green fire quest is for for warlocks yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like give something that you know takes some time to to invest. But at the end of it, you know, apart from you getting all the eye candy and lore and whatever, you get with something really cool. It's like, okay, this guy did his his part on doing the, whatever yeah, the fuck questline or all cosmetics, and it can run parallel to whatever the content is. It doesn't have to uh, unlock raids or dungeons. It doesn't have to play into all of that. Like like I said, Surmor is a good example. Class uh, campaigns is a good example. Greenfire is also one. Uh, Covenant campaigns by default, they're no, I cannot... good, they're a good example, but. Nobody cares about covenants and nobody cares about the story, not to mention the yeah, stories again, that were written were it's black. It's external. It's something, th this is what I'm saying. They need to capitalize on the intimacy a player has with a, his tunes. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, I know it sounds stupid, I know, but there's a, per, a, a personal involvement over there which is not catered to enough. You can yeah. do your covenant quest, but you're not really, it's not your representation. You've been playing your class or your classes for a couple of years. You have a different emotional investment into that shit as opposed to, oh, hey, here are the vampire boys. Here are the, the, the cute little blue lightning fairies and stuff. You don't have the same involvement. I get it. They're, they're washed up. Not It's not the same thing. Uh, successes have been always uh, um, tracked with these uh, little bits and pieces of content where it would involve your class, your spec or whatever and get into it. Yeah. Fun, fun activities like you know you will have on on uh, maybe on Mechagon and or or Surmor follow the story story was very great on on Surmor or the fun you had or challenge you had in Mage Tower or the super secrets and and fun activities you had on Timeless Isle and there's there's a million different examples where you can see external content being done great and also that paired up with some sort of content that addresses you as a player of this spec or class. This is what they've been missing for the longest time. So, uh, what's uh, what's so uh, what Lego wants honestly? more slab monks. More slab monks. Uh, no, of no, course, no, no, we nothing, love Lego and no, uh, nothing surprising there. <laughs> um, yeah. So Isle of Thunder, Thomas Isles were good. Mechagon was fun. Uh, it had had some activities. They weren't you know at the same I, level of fun, but it was some that tried, you could do. It was yeah, man. Coming coming from the whole hurdle that we had prior to that. It was such a refreshing thing because you you didn't only have Mechagon, you also had at uh, Najatar, and yeah. it was a bounce between it was, the two. It was a lot of stuff to do. That very nice contrast. I mean, uh, if you take out Benthic gear, which was a, a, a pain for anybody who was trying to you know 
actually get you know progression out of their world content uh Nashatar was cool you had you know the intricate uh, mage uh, puzzles and stuff and mechagon you can just farm mounts and all that robotic stuff which was cool and it had nothing to do with progressing except if you wanted to get flying but outside of that oh, yeah. it, it was stuff that you could do and even I, who I'm not a big fan of just farming mindless stuff, I ended up farming Mechagon for Maybe some too. mounts all the way up until uh, yeah. until the pre-patch of Shadowlands. So that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff is cool. Stories and quests that can evolve. The, what I mentioned about uh, Covenant campaigns is that it's a story that ro ro runs parallel to the raid. It's just that it was a boring story. It didn't involve, like you said, you as a person yeah, yeah, yeah. too much. But they did try no. to put something extra. It just wasn't. It was like eh. you, I mean, you, just, you guys are just goddamn man. Of course, you're gonna mention that the, the secrets looks lucid, lucid dream maze. Of course, the, 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 uh, guys. Every patch, every type of content will have its its flaws. Okay, I get it. <laughs> uh, but you have to like now we're looking at the the grand scheme of things, right? Some are bad, some are good. But the whole, the, I'm, I'm talking about here more as a concept. I was balanced racials, all races have uh, less racials and uh, even when they are useful, they feel boring, undead. Uh, allied races have uh, five to six racials and they feel good, like Vulpiro's tent, uh, extra backspace and extra heal ability. This is this is something that it's, it's in a different spectrum of, of development, but sure, I, I kind of agree here. Uh, it's, a, it's a discussion to be made whether racial um abilities or passives or whatever how much should they impact you know your your gameplay it's, i think like it's a good point when they when they uh, attack like the utility you know the convenience sure that would but, be good yeah straight po straight up power is something like it's a little bit old where you had orcs and trolls that have the you know the racial that gives you a, a certain stat boost um i'm not too keen on that for instance i personally loved orcs being a little bit more resistant to stuns torrents stunning high mountains charging so that kind of stuff is cool and it's definitely it, it's pretty obvious that in developing uh, the allied races they kind of went a little bit back and realized that maybe we're not uh, putting as much love and uh, customization into our actual races which is why i don't know in which patch they did it but they added orc for instance customization night elves as well where you can now have like leaves and shit in, in yeah, your stuff so making cool. races a little bit more a little bit more unique, right? I don't know about the racials in terms of power, my man, because from how how things are looking, considering how they they want to increase accessibility and not make it so that a race is an is a is a wall or a restriction, it's unlikely that the the power player power racials will be addressed in any significant way unless they just nerf the existing ones to to match it. It's just gonna be adding uh, even more things to be balanced out for the future, so. Uh, I think yellow, um, no, no yellow flash. Um, no, Cesare had like a good point. I think that the utility aspect of it would be would go a longer way. Yeah. Uh, just remove the power gain from it whatsoever and just make it more themed, where it would just be uh, an element of convenience of, uh, you know, this is good to have something. Yeah. Right? I like I, I like discounts this. for goblins. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I always been max for my classes. I mean, if you compare Magar orcs and Mecha gnomes, it's just insane. Mount speed versus stack in main stat and three minute fill. With John. Yeah, this is what I was saying. So if they're going to go the route where they're going to put in on racials power, in, even if they're like small numbers, if you're going to min-max, like, you know, a lot of folks do, you you are going to 100% see the differences. And it's just not, it, it's a racial. This shouldn't be that, that high of an impact. Plus the hurdle that they'll ha they're going to have to compensate for each and every other race to have some sort of power gain, which is, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's silly. It's yeah, well, let's, let's keep it up uh, with... 100% the, the talents as they would in Dragonflight, right? And the gear you're gonna get, that's it. Fuck it. Rest of the other stuff, <clears throat> this is why I opened this can of worm. Rest of the stuff should be either utilitary, good to have, or cosmetic. Mostly, mostly cosmetic, I would feel. And just address this a lot more, because again, they, like the, the system y, you like know, what they did, feature y. Yeah, go ahead. So, so I think that what they're doing right now, but they're not doing uh, enough of it. Uh, for instance, the uh, the Blood Elves quest line in, uh, in Silver Moon, especially the Paladin ones, if you get the Paladin set, that is stuff that I like to see. I've actually, and I think I've said this before, I've actually found myself uh, falling in love with the game again once I, I went on my uh, Blood Elf Paladin and uh, Lady Liadrin called me in Silver Moon and I started to fight back the undead and that felt like Warcraft again, man. That felt like, oh, I'm a Paladin, I'm using that the feeling. light to burn. Yeah. It did send me to Bash and to forge a weapon, but whatever. Fuck I that! 
I used the power of the Fuck light it. to actually uh, kill whatever leader of the undead that wouldn't die because he was undead and only with the power of the afterlife, whatever. But I felt like a paladin, I felt like a blood elf and I was rewarded and I have a cosmetic that's only available at, to, to my knowledge through for blood elf paladins, which is cool. That's what I want. If I'm playing a blood elf paladin, I want to feel like a blood elf paladin. If I want to play an orc and that's, you know, the high mount, the... The uh, the heritage armor that was good. Oh, that did. was cool. Yes, if they can if they can do that more and put like some some interesting story into it as well. Don't put the requirements of of rep right, but put like a story like the Torin one is really cool. You go into like all sorts of spiritual stuff and talking to ancestors and that. That was really fucking cool, man. Yeah. And you get the big fucking yeah. fucking trunk tree yeah. trunk on the back, which I've wanted since fucking vanilla, man. When you see that torrent yeah, smack yeah, that yeah. bear with a that's tree the trunk. fantasy of it, hundred <sighs> percent. That, again, that's a realm of possibilities they can do for orcs. I want to see that. It's a missed opportunity. To, to orcs, like yeah. get, get some some heritage armor for orcs, like the old classic grunt style, but yeah, it'll be really dope. detailed and stuff. Mm, I'm getting goosebumps, man. I, I, I'm, I'm getting so the, there's a lot of opportunity, and I'm sure we're not reinventing the wheel here. I'm pretty sure in their meetings and stuff they discussed about this. You know, it's all about you know getting everything on time and right, and having the the sufficient talent pool and and and, and work uh, resources yeah. to to do so. Hopefully, with uh, the hundred plus people from uh, proletariat, this this could be a thing happening. We're just like laying out the the ideas and uh, chatting it with you guys because again, we feel like, and hopefully the majority of you agree. You know, okay, systems, features, all of that, fixing problems with alts and whatever. But when the game feels boring, and it it will eventually will, you're gonna get bored of raiding and get bored of M plus, gonna get bored of arenas. What are you gonna do? Not much, right? Yeah, and then you're gonna have shit like Brawler's Guild or Mage Tower or uh, the Suramar story, things like that. Or you can hop on on a heritage quest for your orc or your night elf or you know the classic races and stuff. There's there's so much potential there. Like class class quests, uh, uh, as Flame mentioned, and there's a bunch of other folks mentioned class quests where you would go in and and do a little bit of a story and and get some nice cool cosmetic reward at the end. Uh, uh, people were talking about, you know, um, doing implementing quests or or gameplay loops where you would be able to change um, the the colors or the the effects of your spells. I think we talked about that yeah, cosmetics grid. for spells, yeah, yeah cosmetics for spells and, and all of that. There's so much potential here, and I feel they're missing out on this. And this would be such such a huge win. And I'm really really sorry that we didn't talk about this in the casuals versus hardcore episode last week. That, that would have This is a very good way. This is part two. Yeah, um, well, and it's not it. it's not like uh, they're, uh, these these things are foreign to them and even with spell effects we had them in BFA with the essences remember if you got whatever the, you yeah, can you upgrade your them up, yeah, yeah, yeah you can have the different spell effects so it's definitely within the realms of possibility and seeing how how they're improving definitely on the aesthetics of the game in Dragonfly because I'm I'm still I I'm still recalling those those reveals, man, that drag theory. However, however much I don't particularly vibe with how the specs seem to look, how, how the, the specs the seems to, seems to be designed. Yeah. No, uh, and the, the race, yeah, the race the, looks silly. We can talk about the race as well. We but will talk about the, the race, spell right? effect. Uh, yeah, they, they, well, they, they are seeing we are seeing upgrades in terms of animation. Well, so, hello, yes. I mean, and it's nothing new, right? In uh, what was it, Warlords of Dran or Warrior got a big bump to its spell effects. Not just Warrior, but Warrior. I, I was playing Warrior at the time where Blaze from was b improved whirlwind. Like when that happens, and just just uh, like a, like an honest gamer opinion, when that happens, I actually play my work because I liked Whirlwind because it looks so <laughs> it cool. Looks and cool yes. That's when I farm my Apexus yeah. crystals and got the mount because I liked looking at the goddamn spell. So if I can do that with just like an upgrade, why wouldn't I actually work to obtain that? For sure. So yeah, 